I've tried to run, I've tried to hide, but everywhere I go, there it is. 25 pounds? No, 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 I ordered 200. What is beef? You still got that meat connected? You can get 12.50 for that on eBay. Boom. You cut vegetables like a bitch. Not system. System, baby. System, system. This is your brother's house. I was running it fine without you. Why didn't he leave it to you then? FX is the bear. It's a show I've seen advertised all over TV, and here I thought I'd never make a video about it. The series as a whole was pretty entertaining, but one episode in particular grabbed me by the throat and made my eyes pop out of their socket. I've seen a lot of bullshit television shows over the past few years that are either painfully average or just downright horrendous. So believe me when I say that FX is the bear has some serious potential to be a great television show. The bear follows a young fine dining chef named Carmen, who goes back home to fix his brother's sandwich shop in Chicago after a painful family tragedy. Thrust into a new world, Carmen must balance the disheartening reality of owning a troubled business while dealing with family issues and an uncooperative staff, all while processing his brother's suicide. The show is also a chaotic look into the glamorous life of working in a kitchen in the food industry. Whether you've worked in a nice-ass restaurant or McDonald's, I'm sure those who've worked in the food business can somehow relate to this show in some way. The Bear has the same panic-inducing style that the Safdie brothers employ in their films like Good Time and Uncut Gems. A lot of the show is filmed in close-up, and there's also a lot of quick cuts that visually benefit the storytelling. For a short-form dramedy series, The Bear has some great cinematography. Episodes usually run for about 25 minutes to a half hour, and the pacing of the show leaves us viewers salivating for more delicious television. Like the mouth-watering dishes in the show, each episode is handled with the utmost care in depicting the harsh reality of working in a kitchen full-time. Episode 7 titled Review is truly a remarkable episode of television that's shot entirely in one take with no cuts. I've seen some people on the Bear subreddit saying there's hidden cuts littered throughout the episode, but stick around because I got some evidence that'll disprove that theory. Before we go any further, do the things the algorithm likes and let me know what you think of the Bear in the comments below. The first 2 minutes and 45 seconds of episode 7 are just the opening title sequence, and beyond that is a continuous long take that transports us into the reality of the show. Not once does the camera cut away from what's going on in the kitchen. Instead, we're roaming around the kitchen as if we're actually there, watching the frenzied staff drag their feet and trip over the beefy expectations placed upon them by a positive review. Unfortunately, the kitchen staff can't handle the pressure of the review, and they inevitably crumble because of their inability to communicate. Well, that and because Sydney left the pre-order option open. Primarily, this episode is filmed in one continuous shot that lets the viewer naturally take in what's happening on screen. Sure, other shows have done something like this. Let's take It's Always Sunny, for example. Charlie Work is the fourth episode in season 10, and one sequence in the episode maintains the illusion that the camera never cuts away from Charlie as he's duping the health inspector. Sonny's hidden cuts are pretty easy to spot, but after doing the proper research, episode 7 of The Bear was reworked two weeks prior to filming, specifically to shoot the episode in one continuous long take. The reason why I love long takes so much is because the amount of time and effort that goes into planning them is immeasurable. Continuous long takes are like a choreographed dance between the actors and the camera where everyone has to hit their marks exactly, and if one person f***s up, the whole thing is f***ed up. Jeremy Allen White, who plays Carmi, said this about the episode. I don't know how much a single shot actually lends itself to the story. It's kind of like, we've got money, we've got a lot of time, we can do this, and it will be really impressive. And it is impressive. But I think in our case, it really lends itself to the story and where the characters are at, because the tension is building so quickly, we don't give the audience a break from it. There's no reprieve. It's consistent. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, you left the pre-order uh, option open. Okay, uh, no. Okay. Sorry, uh, yes. What's that mean? That means we have 78 slices of chocolate cake, 99 french fries, 54 chickens, 38 salads, and 255 <laughs> yeah. penny sandwiches due up in 8 minutes. So yes, yeah, if uh, I told you. You didn't tell me shit. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Let me think for a second. Fucking Christ, I told you. I told you we were fucking ready. I told you that dish wasn't fucking ready. What does this have to do with it? Stop! Stop! 
In just this episode alone, tensions between the characters rise significantly, unforeseen obstacles are thrown in Carmi's way, and his destructive attitude decreases morale among the staff. It's a real shit show that feels so real and authentic, you might actually forget you're watching a television show. It also shows how the toxic cycle of abuse can infectiously pass around the kitchen and ruin everyone's mood. Yo, Carmi, I did it. I figured out what I was doing wrong. You know, I was trying to make a cake donut when it should have been yeast all along. And I'm saying, Marcus, why are you with me? 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 Huh? Get the back to work! Move! Holy shit. Everybody! Car? Idiots. By the time you're actually done watching the episode, you feel exactly how the characters feel. From top to bottom, Review is a beautiful episode that properly depicts all the stress and anxiety that goes into working in the food industry. For me, it's just, it's easier to get lost in the story, shooting scenes that way. And then certainly, yeah, in episode uh, seven, where we do it in one take, that was the most fun. I think, you know, we, we shot it like five times just in one morning. It took us about 27 minutes to shoot so we would just shoot it in 27 minutes then there was like a pretty extensive like reset obviously yeah, for, for props and stuff like that um but not that like half an hour maybe so we were able to shoot them all really really quickly and it was so fun because your adrenaline is so high the room for error is so low and i think like shooting that episode that way it, it lent itself to the final product because we're anxious as the actors that any mistake could not only ruin my take, but maybe that was Io's best take. Maybe that was Eben's best take. Maybe that was Lionel's best take. Like, there's so much pressure. And I think in that episode, there's so much pressure for the characters as well. So I think I think it, it worked really well and it, it made sense to shoot that episode that way. It's pretty strange for me to gush about shows that are fresh out of the oven like this, but The Bear has more heart than any show I've seen in recent memory. Many television shows feel soulless nowadays, and there's almost nothing that can justify their existence, but thankfully, the bear came out swinging and knew exactly the show it wanted to be. It's more than just a show about food, it's about family. And in the words of Dom Toretto, I don't have friends, I have family. <coughs> the Bear is one of the best new television shows I've seen in a long time, and I quickly wanted to summarize my thoughts on it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, leave a like to support what I love doing most. I do have some more videos planned for the future, so I hope you'll subscribe to see what comes next. In the meantime, fuck off.